spoken lately. I haven't thought about flying for a long time. I have a dream that at that moment when I was alone above the clouds for a long time. I have dreamed of waking up in a room surrounded in blue and green grass for more years than I could dream of memory. I have a walked back into the past or scratched on the doors of my origins, where it all came from, since so I held up that cape for the last time. Return to Kent Town 10th year anniversary edition is a revised version of Andy Ern's first poetry book. The book can be purchased from Amazon and it contains numerous additional material. Spoken Label Hi, it's Andy Ern from Spoken Label. Thank you today for streaming or downloading another episode of Spoken Label. Spoken Label was originally set up on beginning of 2016 and as of speaking has currently nearly 300 sessions. The full archive is available on Spoken Label full stop bandcamp.com although it is available for free for stream and download if you wish I am always grateful for any sort of kind of donation to enable me to keep the running costs of this podcast going. And enjoy. Take care. Bye-bye. Spoken Label. Hi, guys. Andy N. Spoken Label. Back in the house on a Tuesday evening. We're over to a country today for a writer in a country I never actually interviewed before. So, this year, I'm looking forward to this. We're over to Amsterdam. I've got a lovely gentleman we called Tom. And I'm going to pronounce it right. It's right, Tom. Tom Melsen. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Yes. Yeah, not not bad for me. That I wasn't sure that. <laughs> so <laughs> now I um, I found Tom fairly recently on Instagram actually by chance, and I really really enjoyed his poetry. He's just bought a debut collection out, and what's always good when you go bios of people is you can find the other thing to do. And Tom done a couple of music albums that are quite similar to my music as Ocean in the Buckle, and he's an artist as well. And I thought, oh, we've got. This would be a great profile, this definitely. So I dropped a message and he agreed to it. So now, Tom, obviously, for people that don't know you, first of all, obviously, tell people a little bit about yourself. Were you actually born in Amsterdam or were you born elsewhere? Yes. Well, first of all, thank you, Andy, for having me on your show. Um, well, I was born in, uh, in Rotterdam. In the ah, Netherlands. Okay. And um, we grew up, I grew up in a small town near Rotterdam, I think 10 minutes from, uh, from, the, from Rotterdam. And it's just that I've been living in the suburbs of, uh, of Amsterdam, I think five years ago. Mm. I moved there, which had nothing to do with my art, <laughs> but with my <laughs> private life. But um, yeah, I've been traveling back and forth uh, to Rotterdam and Amsterdam and also go to uh, Berlin. Uh, oh, nice, nice. Yes, so I see that as my second hometown, which I don't live there, but feels like. Um, and uh, I've been uh, I've been growing up uh, listening to a lot of music and seeing a lot of art and reading a lot, and it's always been with me. And um, I never was able to choose between all of those things. <laughs> I think you're like me in the sense of like you don't just believe in sticking to one medium, do you? Why master one when you can master several? As I would say. <laughs> yes, yes, it's true. It's not very. Um, I don't think it's a wise decision, but <laughs> I keep uh, trying to do as many things as possible. And um, I often thought about, well, maybe I should just stick to one thing. Uh, and get better at it. And I'm trying to do that with poetry now, now that I'm older. Um, but it happens that over time, I I, um, well, I go back and forth to making music or making paintings. Um, but I try to stick as much as I can to writing poetry. But um, I sometimes get bored easily. <laughs> I think the word is distracted as well, don't you? So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, no, completely. Now, which of them, obviously, like I said, we're going to talk about all three of them separately, of course, but which one came first then? So, was it poetry first or was it art? Because I couldn't imagine you doing your music when you were five or six. <laughs> no, no. I, well, actually, I, I started writing, I think, as many artists uh, do. I think, I don't know, but I started writing when I was very young. I think I was in primary school and um, we used to have 
uh, a little uh, club when we were like six years old and we would make songs, uh, very bad songs. Uh, <laughs> of <laughs> course. Perform- yes, of course, they were, you know, bad. And uh, I used to perform them with uh, the friends I had at the time. And I used to write the lyrics for these crazy little tunes. <laughs> and um, and so I, but I continued writing and mostly writing songs. And uh, that's what I've been doing, I think, since uh, forever. And I started painting, I think, when I was 18. So that came pretty late, actually. I think it was after an exhibition of Picasso that I went to with my dad. Oh, wow. Yeah, we tried to um, to see as much of his work as possible. It was an exhibition of the his Paris uh, period. Um, and uh, I was so... Um, yeah, well, I, I enjoyed it so much. And so I tried to work my way as a painter from that. So actually pretty late, I think around 17. And um, and I think I've learned from him by just watching a lot of his paintings. But to answer your question, writing is what I first started with. Yes. And what I've always been doing my whole life. Yeah, I could understand completely. Does uh, the creativity run in your family then? Obviously, with your dad going to an exhibition with your dad. Um, yes, and my, my dad especially, uh, we went to exhibitions and he was very much into art. So he, he took me under his wings to go and see those kind of things. And he talked to me about that when I was pretty young. Uh, I didn't understand much of it at the time, but um, it was nice to be able to grow up um, with art and um especially it was especially like uh the paintings and famous painters like uh, picasso for instance and van gogh of course um those kind of things yeah but not so much musically um i think i've learned that from myself or, or just um, yeah i think the music happened to me because i like you i grew up listening to music all my life and it came, I started doing it when I found up for an abandonment in the early 30s, about 16 years ago, and it was never planned. And it just kind of, like probably like you, didn't it? It was a happy accident, really. Yeah, I think uh, when you start to be a teenager, you want to see a lot more of the world and, world and you try to, um, to, you know, do anything that your parents don't <laughs> listen oh. to completely. The music, that kind of. <laughs> oh yeah, that's true. That's true. Because first, first band I did, Tom was I was in a, a goth rock band in the early twenties. Oh really? And that's we great. were atrocious. <laughs> I, <laughs> I used to wear. I was dead slim at the time. I'm not as slim now. I, I used to wear 26 inch hip leather pants, and I had my hair was never long enough, so I had to wear this big ridiculous wig. Going straight oh, down past your shoulders. Great, that's yeah. so awesome. Yeah, I, I know exactly how you feel because, uh, yeah, I used to be in a you know like goth groups, and um, I can, uh, at one point when I was sixteen, I used to have my hair like Robert Smith from The Cure. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> it was very strange at the time, especially in middle school, middle high school. <laughs> oh wow! Oh my good grief! Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm glad we I had that time and. Uh, we, I started listening to a lot of those bands like Sushi and the Banshees and, uh, you know, that kind of um, uh, music that inspired me of, as well. But that was not what my parents listened to. <laughs> well, my, my dad used to, my dad grew up to sc- still listen to Scottish bagpipe music. Oh, really? Yeah, because yeah, my family's all got a big lot of Scottish and, and Irish. And so I grew up basically been probably forced to listen to that as well. But I've got a good understanding of, they said, goth music, folk music, punk rock, nearly everything. I've listened to all kinds of music. Yeah, you still listen to the same music when we when you were young? Mm, yes and no. Some stuff, yes. Some stuff, no, if you know what I mean. Yeah. I think that some of it is the early 80s pop in England was atrocious. I hated it. So, so yeah, but it's, I think I've got some stuff because I can... Um, I got into a lot of the music I still listen to in my late teens, really. Like, I can name bands like The Chameleons, if you've heard of them, and Joy Division as well. Yes. Several other bits of Mancunian bands, and I still listen to I listen to other sorts of music as well. So you do, mm. I think, yes and no, if you know what I mean, don't you? So. 
Yeah, I know what you mean. I, I, I know. And there were a lot of great bands from around the UK at the, in the 80s, I think, especially, um, especially in the goth kind of scene. Yeah. Now, okay, well, part of, so part of going to music first, I was just having a good reminisce about what music we listened to growing up. Now, obviously, I know that you've obviously done three experimental electronical solo albums. But before we do that, I want to know a little bit more about you've done some film art project soundtracks as well. So tell us about that first. I don't know a lot about that. I mean, that's quite interesting as well. Did that come first, then, did it, be music? Yes, I think first I used to be in bands, you know, really like pop songs and songwriting. And after that, I, I, I wanted to do something else. I wanted to do something for myself. And um, I thought it would be a very interesting way of writing music to see a screenplay, uh, see images and compose music to that. Um, and I tried to do that for, I think, three, four years. Um, but it was difficult being independent, making your own music to get films on board. Um, but I did that and it was interesting because um, what I like when making music is if you can put it in uh, more of an art form, like an exhibition or movie. So I try to do that. Um, so I, that's what I started with. And after that, I, I thought, well, I'm just going to make my own experimental records because, um, yeah, I had to wait for all the films and it took up so much time. And when yeah. you're on your own, you make your own record. It goes just way faster. <laughs> yeah, no, I agree with you completely on that. Uh, I've done bits and pieces of that sort of medium myself, and it takes ages. So I'd rather just do my own imaginary soundtracks and whether they get released or not, I, it's easier. It's definite. Now, I know you've done three, obviously, experimental electronic solo albums. But we'll, we'll just, obviously, because I'm going to talk a lot about your writing today as well as your art. So we'll just go on, talk about the latest one, which is 2019, when you, about Dadaism, when you obviously recorded in Berlin at the time. And it says a base that the writer was featuring soundscapes of the German capital. So tell us about that album and then. Were you actually living in Berlin at that point or was it just backwards and forwards a bit? Yeah, at that time, I, th I think it was around 20, 2019, indeed, yes. I would just tr travel back and forth. Like every month, I would go back to Berlin. <laughs> so it felt like living there. Um, but I felt like I needed to be there to be creative because there was so much going on in Berlin. And um, I kind of started there with painting because I got my first exhibition over there. And so I just went to there a lot, as much as I could, um, and I see Berlin is like a city that's forever in construction or something like that. And um, it also thought, I thought it was a great place for the Dada art uh, record that I wanted to make because I think it was there at the time there was a lot of Dada artists living. Um, so I thought it made sense to do something about that. Um, and at the time I was very interested in the Dada art movement. I tried to you know, read a lot about it because I um, I thought it was so free to do whatever that you liked, and I, that really you know, it spoke to me. Yeah, Scott. If people hear it, it is a very it's an individual album. I think, don't you? Because what I've heard of it, it's it's I don't know. It's hard to describe something you listen to. Something that what you've done is it's. It's ruined boundaries. I think it's also it's something that's very personal. I, I got that straight away when I heard the album. I really enjoyed it, to be honest with you. So it's, but I would appreciate. I would probably, I obviously would be honest and say, not. It could, it's one of those sort of albums where I think you need time to listen to it as well. That's why. So when the way society is sometimes, you know what I mean, Tom. People yeah. seem to rush around a lot, don't they? And it's yeah. that sort of album where you probably need to sit down and probably spend a couple of days letting all the layers just constantly come over you on it. Well, thank you very much. That's the kind of thing. And um, I wanted to make a concept record from start to finish. And um, when you see the song titles, you may figure out kind of a story because it's no instrumental album. It really is open to your own <coughs> imagination. But I wanted to have the sound like it was something like that will be... Um, there will be something for the Dada art movement, something which was very free. Um, 
Yeah. So I really appreciate that you're telling me that because I think it's a difficult record to listen to. I don't think a lot of people enjoy it. <laughs> it's I don't I think it's definite where it's interesting really because it's sometimes um, I think I always tend to look at music like of as a journey really where I'm mad on the 60s singer Scott Walker if you're familiar with his work and um, I love his 60s material and also his 90s and upwards and his more recent material is not like gentle easy listening music for he died his music you've got to give yourself full full experience not like to be working something else in the background or painting or somewhere because it's not that sort of album and yours isn't as well it's an exactly. album you've got to be to give it time on never knows excellent stuff so Yes, thank you. And yeah, you say Scott Walker and what I really enjoy, he's really changed over the years with his musical direction. Oh, yeah. I can only say that's great, you know, not doing the same thing over and over. Yeah, again. yeah, I agree. So that's why I think that's what I like with your work is like you don't stand still. And that's why it's interesting, really. You then, the year after, when self-published a book of little rhymes in 2020 called Quack. Now, mm -hmm. I've not read this, so I'm curious to know. Where did this? Where did the idea for this come from? <laughs> Carving is brilliant. This it sounds great. What I've read about it. I wanted to do a bit more because everything was it sounded so serious. You know, my art. You know, because my art. I'm a very optimistic person. I'm very happy with where I am in my life, um, but people don't see it in my art. It's not reflected in my art because I don't know how this happens. But whenever I make paintings, they're quite dark. Um, and whenever I make music, it's quite dark. <laughs> so people often think that I'm pretty like not I a very mystic person, but I am actually. I think um, it's um, a common myth sometimes, the same with writing really and art and also what you said in music. You think like you're very, very dark, morbid people, aren't we? And I can see that from chatting to you, Tom, and I'm exactly the same. I'm one of the most unserious people you could ever hope to meet. <laughs> Apart from the creative stuff, man, I'm deadly serious. <laughs> yeah, and I, I didn't want to take myself too seriously because, um, so I wanted to have something to light up a bit, especially in these crazy times. And um, it was really pleasant to make this book because it's not something I normally do. Um, so we had, I had a little, it was a little, it was a very weird book with little rhymes about. I don't know about uh, unicorns, uh, <laughs> uh, whatever. Um, I even have a poem about, um, I don't know, it's here, about um, someone from ABBA. <laughs> oh, brilliant. <laughs> uh, I was, uh, there even is a poem about um, my first car, which was a yellow car, which was really stupid. <laughs> um yeah, there's a poem titled I Wish I Was Agneta from ABBA. <laughs> oh, <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> but it's like all these crazy little poems, which was very new to me to write just like these. And I didn't want to call them poems. I see that I do that now, but I see them more as little rhymes. Yeah, because they're kind of dull. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can see you've obviously said it's reading your website. They've obviously is 50 of them done. And I'm just looking at the little extract you've put online now. Oh yeah, this looks really yeah, yeah, it looks really good, really good fun. This book, definitely everybody. So you see, you can tell it's a definite artist that's done it if you look at some of the sample pages on there, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> brilliant. Yeah, yeah. Oh, brilliant. No, great, great that mate. Really does look good. So now we're here today, obviously, really to talk about and how I first found you, which was about your newish poetry book, Aftermath, aren't we? So now obviously. It's quite interesting, really, because you've done from doing an album like Dardism and then doing a with a little rhymes book, and now you're onto your first proper poetry book. Now, tell us about that, because obviously, Aftermath, where did the idea of this book originally come from? Yes, I think I started Aftermath two years ago. Um, it, it, it's actually, I, I started writing after a breakup, and... Um, I was kind of in, the, I think, in December, just before the lockdown, the first lockdown. I think that was around March or something. Um, and I just started writing and trying to really learn how to write poetry because I've never done proper poetry before. Uh, I used to do a lot of songwriting, but 
it's very, it feels different to write poetry from songwriting. The only thing that I think is the same sort of the rhythm when writing to have a certain rhythm, but I can write you a pop song in 10 minutes, but I can never write you a poem in 10 minutes. Well, that t- they take hours and all in weeks sometimes poetry can. You're right. I yeah. could probably do a song in about half an hour and I'll, no, not probably not as quick as you, but yeah, poetry, it's one of those ones in it where it can, I take it take me twenty drafts to get a poem right. Sometimes it can. Well, yeah, yeah. It took me forever, and and uh, and I wanted to do something else because I was painting for ten years, maybe a bit longer, and I did a lot of exhibition, and I got stuck. I I didn't want to do the same thing over and over again, so I needed something like a new challenge, mm. uh, because I couldn't go any further with painting. I I wanted to do something else, but it made me unhappy. It made me upset. Um, doing the paintings because um, it's actually I'm when I do painting I make ten paintings. And wow! Only one is okay from that, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. No, it's I really get you. Painting, but I I really wanted to do something else, and I I thought well I have more time now because of course we were in a lockdown, and I wanted to find new ways to get creative. So I started reading a lot of poetry. Um, learning from it and just trying to write and I had the decision to at least one hour a day write poetry but it ended up way more but every day I needed to write just to get better and learn or read because it was new to me apart from songwriting which is different Um, and I still learn and I hope to get better and uh, I still have to write a lot Um, but yeah so after two years I I think Aftermath was finished and here it is right now. And I'm very happy with it um, because um, it was really, it was a lot of work um, and it wasn't easy, but I'm happy that I did. And it was very, it felt good doing that, being able to do it everywhere as well. You know, when painting, you have to sit in a room and you have to be locked up in the room and you just can't go anywhere. And now I could go to, Forever um, to write, and that was really nice. Yes, yeah, you, you can argue when you're a painter, you've got to carry lots more equipment around with you. When you're a <laughs> poet, it's just a pen and paper sometimes, isn't it? Yes, and that, that was really that felt really free, even though we were in the lockdown, of course, we couldn't go to much uh, places, but it felt it's sort of freedom to go to the beach and write or go whatever. Um, apart from everything that was closed, of course, it still yeah. felt like I had, I could move making art and which is of course difficult when making music or paintings. And I really enjoyed it. Now you can tell you did with this one is when you've read what I've read of the book. Yeah. It's definitely a labor of love for you. Now I want to ask you as well about this because I can see in a hundred interesting in fact, when you divided it into four sections now, yeah. I'll read out what Amazon's got about this and then you can explain to us why, what made you want to do this. So obviously section one is about poems about love and intimacy. And section two is poems about heartbreak and unfulfilling designs. But per section three is about poems about violence, death and grief. <laughs> okay, we'll move on to part four very quickly then. <laughs> <laughs> but part four is poems yeah. about kindness, hope and nature. But yeah. seriously, okay, I, I don't want to take the mickey because I'm not. But it's that fair, there's four very different sections there. Is this because um, what made you want to do this book in four sections like that? Well, actually, the initial idea was to write a very positive book about human kindness, being kind, and being the best person you can be. That was the idea, but of course, that didn't happen. So, <laughs> uh, <Of course. laughs> there was lots of hate and a lot of heartbreak. Uh, especially at the time I was um, out of a relationship and I was just mad. And um, so you go through all kinds of phases over these two years. Of course, first you're very, I was very mad or heartbroken and I had so many things to write about. So I I said, well, this is a mess, you know, a book with all these kind of um, different poems. I had to do sections because I couldn't choose. And well, I thought, well, I'm doing this poetry book, which is a collection of four different topics um, because I just couldn't choose. 
Um, but maybe I'll the next book I will just pick one. Yeah, I think I think you do. When you've done one. I've done what several books over the years, and my first book at the time was I couldn't really tackle down the theme on it. But I know even the second book that I think it took, which took me five years to write the second book because oh, horrifyingly. Oh, <laughs> but yeah, well, the second, the third book was done quicker after that as well. So, but I think there is always a jump sometimes when your first book, your second book, yours is a very confident first book. So that's why I wanted to really talk to you today about this. And that's why, but I think it's, you're right, it's trying to do in sections sometimes makes it easier. So that gives it like four little books in one big book than almost it does. So, Yes, that's that's true. I, I I had to do that because um well I thought well it was the phases I went through in these past uh for uh, two years and it was everything I felt and um there was there was also a lot of hate but it was not my intention, of course. <laughs> I really wanted Hopefully that. Hopefully not much violence, right? <laughs> <laughs> no. no, it's okay now. That's why it's called aftermath. I needed to get everything out. And, uh, yes, seriously. What was the significance of, of the cover? Because like, I'm no good with the bird population, the feathered kind people must notice. So what made you want to go with this? I'm not sure what sort of bird it is on the cover, actually. What? So what made you want to go with the cover? Oh, wow. We have that many covers. Uh, good question, actually. Hmm. Um, and um, that was a lot of pro- there was a lot of thinking and uh, 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 just a, a process of, I don't know, uh, it, when you spend so much time on a book, like the cover is the final thing. And I, so I kind of have two versions. <laughs> I also have a rose on uh, another cover, oh, which I think right. is more than noble exclusive. Uh, there's a different cover, but um, yeah, it was kind of, I, I really liked it because it's a very, it's a vintage um, yeah, it's a beautiful cover, really is. Yeah. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. It's kind of like a vintage um, uh, artwork, and I wanted to have kind of like a, a classic touch. Um, yeah, that works. It works. Uh, as soon as I was reading the, the third part, it was all the violence, and I was thinking, <laughs> was the alternative cover a picture of a vulture? <laughs> 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 that might be the next book, right? That will be the next one. <laughs> uh, the publishers don't listen to me, please, anybody, right? So, okay. <laughs> no, no, it's brilliant. Really, really good book, I've read it this time, seriously. So, now, okay, I should have asked you before as well, and I, I was just going to look, look at the bios we were chatting, slightly digressing about your art. I know you've done an art book as well. So, we'll link it into your poetry book, and you'll see the cover items book. How is the difference of doing an art book? compare to doing your silly rhymes book and this book yes well when making an album is actually a collection of things i did over the time mostly in uh, comprehension with an exhibition Hmm. um, because we want to show people something and of course it was um it was it's very good to have um art books especially for selling the paintings (laughs) oh yeah yeah of course yeah (laughs) yeah so and, and then i um it's so we did that for exhibitions. I think I did one for in Berlin, one for in France, and one for in Rotterdam. And um, yes, it's it's very. I don't know because when you make a painting, you don't know that it will end up in an art book or something. It's just so it's not really like a story. It's just a collection of paintings that I exhibited, and. Um, so there's, yeah, it's just a selection of paintings and there's not much um, like a storyline from it, it's apart from the exhibition itself that sometimes you you make. Um, but it, it's really, it's a lot of, uh, less work making an art book for me <laughs> because yeah. I already have the paintings and yeah. most of the time someone asks me something to write. Uh, like a forward or I don't know how you say that introduction uh, around the paintings and I don't do that myself so I have someone else talking about my paintings oh best way best way best it's, way. it's, it's less work for you to do <laughs> definitely yes, I would not be able I would not be able to to talk about my own paintings in a way that will be interesting for a book I think yeah yeah of course now um winding down now obviously with slowly down with this first part of the interview is um obviously you hinted before a possible second book 
So is that what do you reckon you'll be aiming for next in the second book of poetry? Yes, I'm definitely going to write another poetry book because I had such a good, nice time writing it. Um, but I feel like I have to live uh, a bit more <laughs> and travel a bit more and see the world because um, I tried just when this was published after I tried to start writing again uh, like a week later or something but it, it, I was not able to I was not able to it was too much uh, one at a time you know I had to do some living yes to get some inspiration so um, yes it was a struggle I, I finished one poem in uh, two months three months <laughs> Yeah, well, I think it goes that way because I mean, it, poetry for me isn't like a novel where your novels, novelists can bring out two out. Um, well, Stephen King does, and my, my wife's, who's my wife's favorite novelist, he could do two novels a year. But yeah. poetry is like you need to give it that, that dis I mean, distance between the books sometimes. You've been writing novels, right, Andy? Or? I'm a poet, really. I'm a poet. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. I'm a poet. I've done well. I've done what, six poetry books really, and oh, wow. first one came out in 2010. Then straight after that finished, I got diabetes, and it took me five years to get used to that to write the second book. So oh, wow. that's why. Then after that, it was I went in different directions and got around it a bit more with constantly changing as a writer. So, but it's I said it's really really poetry. I think sometimes you need to give yourself that. I think breath is the word some of or just, you know, sp distance sometimes before you go into the next book, next book. And I think that's what you probably need now, probably, then, don't you? So. Yes, and I think it will come. We, we just let it... You no, know, I, I am a work. I want to sit down and write. I don't think it just comes to me, but you can also, it can also be a bit too much, you know? Um, yeah, because I see what you mean over there. Did it affect your writing when you... Change it, change it completely, Tom, you did the first... Book and the second book, have you ever seen them? They're very, very different books. You can tell they're me, but the second yeah. one was a different, it went in a different direction. And the third one, three years after that, that went in a completely different direction as well. So it's, I think writing is that way. Some as a poet, it's, it's not, and it's never, not always intended either. Because this third book ended up being a sequel to the second book, but it was looking forwards instead of looking backwards. So it went yeah. in a different direction again. So, and uh, well, how do you look back on your first book now? Now that you've been writing for, I think uh, well, I ended up last year doing the tenth year anniversary wow. redux of it. Congrats! <laughs> I, ended up, I ended up. uh The best way to look at it is, and this, this is not slagging me off at the time. I was a different person to where I am now. Yeah, I mean, you are as a writer, an artist, anything. You change all the time, and you. you <laughs> yeah, nice. basically, yeah. That's why your case is like, you look back at your early stuff, like everything you've done. I can do that with some of the early stuff that I'm sat there thinking, I would love to know what drugs I was on then. And I don't, don't do drugs. <laughs> 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 That's why, do you know what I mean? But yeah. Yeah, I know. That's what it is. So, right. Okay, Tom, uh, what we'll do, we'll wrap up this bit here and I'll let you know, obviously, if people want to find out more about you, where are the best going? I think it's easiest to go to www.tommelson.com. I think all the links are over there. Where yeah. to get them and everything. Or Instagram, Melson Poetry. Yeah. I, I found very helpful for people as well. Um, when you go on the link, link3.ee and dot backslash Melson Poetry as well. That was really helpful. There was a lot of links on there as well. So I'll put that one up on the right up for you as well. Definitely as well. Oh, yes. So. But anyway, it's Thank been a pleasure you. today, Tom. We had a really fascinating chat this afternoon as well. So it's nice to talk to somebody who's got as many sidesteps and his creativity as I have. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe we'll uh, stick to one point, one thing in the future, but who knows? I doubt it. I doubt it, mate. Right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I doubt it too. Well, thank you very much, Andy. Yeah. It's been a pleasure. So everybody hang around because Tom is really is an exceptional poet. So I'm looking forward to him reading a couple of pieces of us in the second half. So, as we'll say, I always say, we'll see you in a minute. Spoken oh, mate. Hi, guys. Still here with Tom. Oh, I've had a really good time chatting to this gentleman today. He's a great guy. So, I'm going to be, I'm just going to shut up now and pass it over to Tom when he's going to read out four poems for us. Interesting enough, one from each section. So, anybody wants scaring, you might want to put it on mute for a minute on the third section. <laughs> over to you, Tom. Okay, well... 
let's start with the first section, which is about um, love. We'll start off romantic. <laughs> the poem is titled The Search. Um, and it was is about when you find someone that you find everything is right about. Um, so here it goes, The Search. Our love was written long before our birth. How can it not be? In stones and tombs, the coral and the sea, the sand that I brush off the skin, deserted and so quietly. History lives in every touch and every kiss. Every wound that formed its tear would one day lead us here to this. Under sheets and through the safety of the silent night, our love was born and read upon the beauty of soft lunar light. It's time and patience that composed the scattered pieces whole. Our love was written long before our birth. It just had to find the soul. That's it. <laughs> uh, that is quite romantic, that one. So, so I take it then, is that the point to lure people in with the romantic and soft pieces? No, it, it is beautiful. Then you change gears, don't you, in the other sections, and so I'm presuming. Yes, it's, um, yeah, we'll change the, the tone now. And we'll go to another poem, which is more about heartbreak and uh, this particular poem is actually one long very long question um, about well wanting to love somebody but not being able to that sort of thing and it's called island which i think sums it up pretty much <laughs> well here we go it's got island what does it mean when I aim to say I love you, but words won't reach so far. When I aim to say I love you and love you for what you are. When distance is many, just from me to you. When my heart, that is the island, is not letting rider through. What does it mean when I aim to say I love you, but we are just two souls divided by a wall in arms and far apart. When hands are secretly departing without a heartstring call. When the lips that speak of love do not let heart open up at all. Oh, it's got, it's got a beautiful ending, that one there. It really, really has. It's really, it's Thank really, you. really, really, really touching that piece. Excellent stuff. So there's obviously then, like, we now move into different territory again, then now, don't we? So for the third one. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, sorry, no. sorry, I'm Joe Ted teasing you all the time here today. <laughs> Well, I, I, now I'm doubting which one to read, but um, okay, well, this um, we'll do this one. It's called Widower. I don't know if you've read it. I think it's on my website. Um, and it's about a dying relationship. So this is sort of, it's not really much of that revenge, um, but it is the, the third section. And this is the, the one that starts the section. It's called Widower and it goes like this. Dress me like a widower, my dying affair. I give you my mourning and the loss of my youth. Countless bereavements are tied up in black tie, golden cufflinks and seldom worn shoes. I put you in silver and I'll kiss your name, scatter you in my hair, for loss will be tender, would I burn it in flame. Let me walk barefoot without a cross in my fist. Give back my mourning and dress my own heart, feeble with butter and marred by its blood. And if I neither recover nor I supplant, dress me like a widower, for that is what I am. Oh, that's like Ed really, really sad that piece. Yeah. <laughs> no, it is. I'm not a bit serious here because like, it it's really your piece, your pieces, Tom. And that's what I love about them. They're very deep. The motive and they say a lot in just a few, often just a few words sometimes. That's beautiful, beautiful, mate. Thank right, you. so we're on to the big conclusion now. Dun, yes. dun, dun. It's, it, 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 this is the most, um, this is actually how I started the book. I wanted the book to have this sort of feeling, so really positive. That's how, it, how I started it before it all went black and downhill. <laughs> And it's titled Kindness, because I thought, well, it's what we need. And I still believe in being kind is the best way to be. Um, so uh, we'll start with this poem titled Kindness. 
Kindness is what's most important. It shall resemble in the end. We are the difference in this world. Forgiving before seeking is what we shall yet come to understand. Understanding and benevolence, goodwill of the heart, for a heart that's filled with kindness, shall not be forgotten, nor will it be torn apart. For it's greater than any wisdom, it is what makes us human. That's a very short one, but I hope it's... Um, Wow, that is, that is really short. That. No, that's excellent. I think it's a good way of that of finishing this off then, basically, with the kind going for kindness at the end of the book. Yeah, so I understand, I understand the journey you've gone through, obviously, with four sections, and it's there is a theme in it, like say some of some books are not themes, but there is a you've gone for the emotional journey with it. No, fantastic stuff, mate. It's been a Thank pleasure you. today, Tom. Thank you again for this today. I've really, really enjoyed this. Thank you, Andy. Right, as guys and girls, that's it now. So obviously for another day. But as Don Callis at Impact Wrestling says, as I always like to conclude with, is stay safe and stay over. And we'll see you all next time. Spoken, mate.